Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's August 24th. These are your headlines. First up, I swear we are hearing about big bluefish from just about every port we talked to this week. Also, finally seeing the Albi bite starting to come into its own down the Cape. And we're hearing about some great fluke fishing between Monomoy and Nantucket. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've got a couple of news items to throw your way. And the first one is another one from uh, the guys from Black Hall Outfitters. They are holding their second kayak demo day this week. And this one's all the Old Town stuff that's going to be at their Westbrook location. And it's similar to last week's in that there's going to be pro staffers there to help you uh, make your choices. You can also take them all, all pretty much the entire old town fleet for a paddle you can kind of dial in what makes the most sense for your style of fishing in addition to that you're also going to get a rare opportunity to pre-order some of the newest stuff that old town is putting out these things are going to be in high demand they're not going to be easy to get so you can get ahead of the wave and be one of the first people out there on the water uh, using these things so that's pretty cool and if i know black call outfitters there's going to be a lot of other stuff going on there this weekend so definitely going to be worth it especially if you're a kayak enthusiast so head over to their Westbrook location and give that give that a look uh, next thing we're going to talk about is uh, just a quick rundown of what's going on in the dream boat challenge two more fish hit the board this week and one of them made some minor waves at the top of the scoreboard the first fish was a 3.17 pound sea robin entered by Sean Vanitas of Lindenhurst, New York, landing him in third place for the category. The second fish is a category-leading porgy landed by Adrian Taylor of Tinton Falls, New Jersey. That fish knocked tournament leader Bobby Cifarelli down a spot in the porgy category and shaved a point off his dream boat leading score. The top three now look like this. Luke Citarelli remains in third place with 13 points. Eddie Terrabile holds steady in second place with 18 points. And Bobby Cifarelli loses one point but still holds a commanding lead with 24 points. We also want to remind Dreamboat competitors that the fish of the month for August is black sea bass, and we have not yet received a single entry in that category. So seize the opportunity to scoop up that monthly prize, a Tsunami Shield Reel, coupled with a Tsunami Armatech Rod and a Dextreme Filet Knife from Dexter Outdoors. The Dreamboat Fishing Challenge is the Fisherman subscriber-only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21-foot Steigercraft Center console powered by a Yamaha along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. And lastly, we'll talk about the giveaway, which is ongoing. And definitely seen like an avalanche of uh, new photos this week. A lot of diversity of species this week, which is great to see. And... Um, it's also just great to see that participation coming up as you know the fall run kind of starts to kick into gear. Um, if you guys don't know the drill, it's pretty simple. Um, you just got to get your photos into me at dandersonatthefisherman.com or text them to the number on the screen. And um, basically, I'm going to pick my favorite photo, and they are going to win a prize pack from Missouri. It's going to have a whole bunch of stuff in there, and uh, it's going to be a great prize. And we're going to pick that. I can't remember the date off the top of my head, but it's the last Wednesday in October. So you've still got plenty of time to, uh, to make that happen. So get those into me, and uh, we'll pick a new winner. into the reports now we're going to start things off up in Maine and uh, for the second week in a row we're really hearing about good striped bass fishing from you know just north of Portland down to Biddeford and then all the way into uh, into that short stretch of New Hampshire coastline uh, I haven't necessarily heard about a lot of big stripers up there but just really good action on fish from like 30 inches up to like the low 40 inch class and uh, a lot of a lot of people getting it done with chunk bait, but uh, definitely hearing about guys doing it with swim plugs and some top water action, some soft plastics as well. So that's been great. Uh, they're also seeing some really good action for uh, bluefish and some big bluefish, which they don't see all the time. I know a lot of the guys that fish up there are kind of hoping they're going to stick around for a while. So um, 
you know, really good fishing up, by, up on that southern Maine coastline right now. Definitely some exciting stuff. Dropping down into northern Massachusetts to the Plum Island area. Also some really big bluefish from the jetties on Plum Island this week. Got fish up into the mid-teens and the bass fishing has definitely been getting better as well. For a little more on that, let's toss it over now to James Jukes. Down in the basement right now just doing a little pre-fall run prep. Uh, that fall run probably start up around the next full moon. Uh, freshwater guys are steady, nothing spectacular. Um, hitting all their local spots and whatnot. Uh, as far as the surf up this way, I had kind of an off weekend, which is okay. I don't mind, but uh, my fishing partner is in a bunch of others in the area. Did quite well. Uh, fish close to 30 pounds. Uh, guys up north in New Hampshire, they're pretty steady, nothing great. Guys down in Gloucester, same thing. They're having their little bluefish uh, excursions at last light, first light, with pencil poppers and poppers and uh, some spooks. Uh, decent sized bluefish is for up this way. Um, I think one guy had one around eight pounds. Uh, fun stuff if you can find them. They've been sporadic, of course, they're moving all the time. Uh, the striped bass are definitely changing. And like I said, this uh, next full moon should spark a real feeding frenzy with the bait that's pushing out of the rivers. So a bunch of silver sides that have come out onto the ocean front, uh, along with, uh, there's been a lot of green crabs in a few of the boulder areas, north and south of us. Uh, but so far, so good. Uh, till next time, Dave. Heading out of the Plum Island area and kind of looking out to the offshore fishing out of Jeffries. We didn't get any reports from that area this week, but I know the week prior there was some good tuna action out there and there was some good sharking going on out there. So I don't know if it was a weather thing or what it was, but um, the offshore fishery at Jeffries has been very good and I would have to guess that it's still very good right now. Dropping down into the Boston area, still hearing about good striped bass action throughout the Harbor Islands and some big fish in there. You know, a lot of 20 to 30 pound fish and some fish pushing up into the 40 pound class as well. Um, a lot of these fish are being taken at night on live eels. Heading out of that area into the Situate area, this is where another area where we're seeing a lot of big bluefish. Um, seeing fish up into the high teens trolled up at Minot Ledge, at the SA buoy, and uh, some of the other areas around there. If you can track down a school of bait, which has been hard to find, probably just because these bluefish have been chasing around, I uh, pretty much guarantee you're going to find yourself some of those big bluefish. So that's some exciting stuff. Next thing we're hearing about Massachusetts is all the way out on the Cape. The uh, outer beaches have been putting out striped bass again, especially Nauset Coast Guard area. Um, a lot of top water action, first and last light, and some decent fishing right through the night. Uh, so it's good to see those fish kind of regrouping and coming back into the beaches there again because for a little while there it was pretty slow. Jumping down into the Monomoy area, um, we've been seeing this kind of increasing over the last three, four weeks. Um, the fluking in the Monomoy shoals and then out around Nantucket has been getting better and better. For a little bit of a deeper rundown on that, let's toss it over now to Danny from the Goose Hummock Shop. Good morning everybody, Danny Jones here from the Goose Hummock Shops. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about fluke fishing this morning. Um, this summer, the fishing has been really kind of up and down with the tuna fishing, the striper fishing. Uh, tuna fishing has really slowed down lately. For the last three weekends, friends of ours, on the weekend, instead of tuna fishing, we've been fluke fishing off uh, Nantucket and Monomoy Shoals. There's quite a few shoals out there. Last weekend, we had another phenomenal trip. I think we had 12 or 15 fluke all over 22 inches in size. Uh, the key that we were using, we have these new... Monomoy fluke jigs. It's a flutter spoon like this, five inch long, rigged on 50 pound test line, all quality components. And then what we do is, because we're usually fishing anywhere from 30 to 60 feet of water. So you're gonna, you're gonna, this is a tandem rig, so you're gonna put weight on there, whether it's a ball jig or even like a big spro jig like this, six ounce, depending on the tide and the current. You just wanna make sure that your whole rig is on the bottom. 
So all, it, it's really relatively easy fishing. You can use a spinning rod, you can use conventional. I prefer to use a Shimano Bait Runner 6000 so I can keep paying the line out to feel for the fluke strike. Obviously, you're going to want to tip it with a little bit of tasty squid. And you can put both squid both on the flutter jig and the ball jig. 90% of my fish on the, the fluke came on the flutter spoon with the squid attached. A few other things you can use. These are some of the different colors of the Monomoy flutter spoons here. You've got a blue sill, a regular sill, blue, uh, blue green sill. They're all pretty cool colors. Like I said, it just must imitate some type of bait fish on the bottom flashing. You can also, instead of a spro jig, use some of the Joe Bags fluky jigs. You know, you got these in five ounce too. And like I said, which is imperative, you, you have this rig has to be on the bottom. So if you're drifting in a current rip and you keep letting out too much line, that jig or a whole rig itself is not on the bottom. So you might want to reel in, drop down again, and make sure you're feeling the bottom and feel for that strike. So for your average recreational angler that can't get out there tuna fishing, is kind of bored with striper fishing, try something different this weekend. Go fluke fishing. We have all the components here at the store. Stop in and I'd be glad to give you a little tutorial on how to rig this up. And while we're sitting here at Monomoy, we're still hearing about good striped bass action on the shoals out there as well, so don't neglect that. Getting down into Nantucket Sound is where the Albi action has really finally kind of gelled. Um, from Katuit all the way down to Nobska and then all throughout the Elizabeth Islands and all the way around the vineyard, or at least most of the way around the vineyard, especially on the east and south side. Uh, the Albi fishing has been really, really good. Uh, we had a little lull there right before last week's report and then it kind of fired up, got into its own um, over the weekend and it hasn't let up. So finally seems like the Albies are here to stay and um, you know if you head out into that area there's a pretty good chance you're gonna find them and uh, you know they're pretty well spread out too so you can cover a lot of water and have a good shot of finding some fish you probably find some fish that you can kind of consider your own instead of having to chase the uh, the schools that everybody's chasing uh, so don't be you know don't neglect the Elizabeth Islands that's been very good I haven't heard about any fish leaking through into Buzzards Bay yet but um, Odds are pretty good that they're going to leak through there this week, so um, definitely keep your eyes open in that area as well, and don't neglect the east end, I mean the west end of the canal. Those fish are going to start to move up into there also. While we're on the subject of the west end, Fluken's been pretty good inside the Stony Point Dyke, up around Mashney Flats and all that. They're still doing some pretty good damage on the fluke in there. And then up inside the canal, it was a decent week. Uh, didn't hear about a lot of big fish. In fact, the biggest fish that I was hearing about were more like in the... Uh, in the low 20 pound class with a lot of fish from like 25 to 35 inches so um, you know it's a little adjustment from what we were seeing back in July but there's tons of bait in the canal and um, it's just a matter of time before the right school of fish finds those and then things go crazy again for a little bit more on what's going on in the canal this week let's toss it over now to East End Eddie. Hi Dave we got the tail end of a rising west tide behind us here in the canal it's going to turn east pretty soon uh, before I do my fishing report, I just want to make an announcement that Harold Skelton, the great veteran who helps so many other veterans, is having another one of his fishing tournaments. We're fishing the Mission 22. Of course, the 22 is the number of uh, veterans who unfortunately take their lives in our country every day. And if not for the brave work of those veterans, we couldn't uh, live in the greatest country in the face of the earth. So Harold always uh, has fishing tournaments for a good cause. And uh, this one is called, um, this is a family fishing tournament. Uh, you can fish, it includes all Massachusetts waters. Uh, it's September 15th to 17th. The, uh, there's a kickoff party in four locations on September 14th. The location closest to where I fish uh, on the canal is the uh, Stone Path Malt in Wareham. I actually spoke there about a week ago. It's a, it's a nice, it's actually a brewery. It's a nice place. And, um, Tournament cost, the, the entry fee is $75 for adults. I think it's a little less than that for kids. And for that, with the entry fee, you also get a t-shirt and a measuring device. So uh, go on the computer and uh, check out Fishing for the Mission. Fishing for the Mission. It's, uh, it's a great cause. So the new moon last week uh, brought in uh, some uh, schools of stripers from Buzz's Bay that were riding an east tide into here and also uh, chasing silver sides and squid, all kinds of bait, including adult mackerel. It's nice to see adult mackerel again. And um, Mike Derrick, who I've wet a line with more times than I can remember, was fishing west of the, uh, of the Sagamore Bridge. That morning he saw five stripers caught, 
And of those five stripers, he caught four of them. So, and the biggest one he caught was 35 inches with a green savage who was bouncing off the bottom, green max savage. And then later he caught a 10 pound bluefish uh, swimming on top, it's good sized bluefish. And uh, Foxborough's Bob Healy caught a uh, 32 inch uh, on top with a nine inch yellow pencil. He's a great guy. And a gentleman uh, visiting from Brazil, Cos Vanion, caught a 35 inch on a yellow jig. Uh, he's here visiting his uh, son from Brazil. And uh, experienced canal rat Chuck Franks was fishing towards the uh, east end. He caught seven bass up to 34 inches on a uh, four ounce Al Gags uh, silver glitter. And um, the boys of summer continue to have a great season. Hollywood Petraca, Paulie the Painter Gravina, and Bill on the Grill Prados. Uh, all uh, did well. They, they caught slots, they caught bass up to 35 inches, and blues uh, up to 33 inches. Uh, they were using loaded red fins and uh, green Mac pencils. So I, I caught a 37-inch uh, uh, the other day on a, uh, a uh, wacky Mac uh, striper gear uh, rocket. And uh, I don't use wacky Macs very often, but I think I'm going to start using it. That was a nice fish. and. Uh, Big, it was a fat fish too. He, he was well fed, so of course the rocket casts like a rocket. It's a great, uh, it's a great lure. So my uh, my tip of the week is that when you're casting, keep your eyes trained on the target, because and, and, as you follow through with your cast, and that will help you uh, make a more accurate cast. So until next week, catch a big one. Moving over into Rhode Island, um, here about a lot more offshore activity off of Rhode Island. Hard to say why, but guys aren't having to run too far. You know, going just, just you know, some of them, some in some cases they're within sight of Block Island, finding a mix of bluefin and yellowfin. The bite's been pretty good as long as you got the weather to get out there. Uh, so it's been a lot of guys staying on that bite, and by all accounts, it's been a solid bite. Moving back in closer to shore on the eastern side of the state, seeing tons of bait now. Um, seeing peanut bunker of all sizes. I've seen peanut bunker up to the size of my hand this week, um, which is really exciting and um, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fire up some great fall fishing. For a little bit more on what's going on in the eastern half of Rhode Island, let's toss it over now to TJ Kopecki. Thanks Steve. Hey guys, nice to be back. Got a quick video for you from the East Bay part of Rhode Island, a little bit of uh, South Coast Massachusetts up in the Taunton River. Um, got a lot to get to this week, so I'm going to make it quick for you. Uh, I'm going to start on Barrington Beach. Barrington Beach has been pretty hot with some bluefish, uh, a couple of stripers mixed in. It's been mainly a dusk and dawn bite. Um, I've had a couple reports of uh, the fish coming in, chasing the bait uh, during the day, but they've been mainly small skipjack to cocktail size blues, uh, probably up to 15, 16 inches uh, from the pitches I saw. Uh, moving into the Barrington River. Uh, Barrington River has actually been really good at night. Um, if you're fishing um, inside of the eddies of the bridge, there has been um, some underslot striped bass in there, um, blues in the mix, lots of skipjacks in there also. Um, Warren River, same idea. It's uh, been pretty good. I saw a couple guys fly casting on the incoming tide in the Palmer River side, uh, doing well with stripers on little Klausners. Um, the stripers aren't that big in there. Uh, the water's still warm, but uh, it's a good opportunity uh, if you wanted to get out there and give it a shot. Uh, moving into Maho Bay. Maho Bay, there's bluefish everywhere, there's bait everywhere. We all know that from the Kikimua River underneath the Maho Bridge, um, all the way from the Coles River, Lees River, the mouth of them, up by the power plants and into Dighton in the Taunton River. Uh, we just if you get out there, you can find them from shore opportunities. Swansea Beach is a great place to uh, get on. Um, another spot is underneath the uh, Brightman Street Bridge from shore. You, there's some shore access there. You could park over by Slates Ferry Bank. Um, getting up into the um, Sconet, uh, we've heard small reports of some Bonita and some Albies. Um, I just haven't seen. Uh, it yet yeah, I have seen other people on social media catching them uh, but I haven't it's not justified by me yet I haven't seen anybody physically catch anything so uh, I will be getting out there to try that uh, all in all everything in the salt has been really good we're coming up on another full moon on the 31st so I think everything is just gonna fall into place 
uh, with the pelagics coming in, the striped bass feeding, bluefish, even still some fluke and some good sea bassing out front on the reefs if you can get out there from 30 to 60 feet of water. Um, freshwater scene. Freshwater scene in East Bay has been unbelievably hot. I had a couple opportunities to get out and fish in the Warren Reservoir and Milford Pond. And I gotta tell you, the white perch bite is on fire. Uh, my buddy Jeff Sullivan's been fishing in a couple of the local ponds and he's been doing well with largemouth bass. Uh, so, all in all, I think this moon is going to affect not only the salt, but the fresh. We know that. So if you are a freshwater fisherman, you can get out there and uh, it's just like that pre-fall run that's starting. The fish are getting on the feed. The water's cooling. The days are getting shorter. I know we talk about this every single week, but every single week it's getting shorter and shorter and the water's getting cooler and cooler. I think I saw reports of 68 degree water, which uh, is a little bit more tolerable for the... Uh, striped bass and, and every, all the other fish to feed on uh, without expending as much energy. So uh, if you have uh, the opportunities, get out there and fish in the East Bay and uh, Maho Bay, and we'll catch you next week. Tight lines. Heading out of the eastern half of the state, kind of heading out more toward the middle. Um, we have not heard of any albies inshore yet, but we did see some really big albies out by the windmills this week, out by Block, including the pending state record albie, which was just under 20 pounds. Uh, so that's a that's one heck of a fish. That's a serious fish. And by uh, you know, after talking to some of the tackle shops on the mainland, you know, once they show up in the windmill area, it usually takes you know somewhere between seven and ten days for them to make landfall. So. Uh, I think everyone is just kind of holding their breath and sharpening the, the hooks on their XO jigs, just waiting for these things to come in shore, and I don't think it's going to be long before they do. Uh, maybe it could even happen tomorrow. Um, but out at Block, we are seeing uh, very good fluke action. We are seeing uh, an increase in the sea bass action, and the stripers are starting to come back to life uh, with better, with more consistency, I should say, out at Southwest Ledge. For a little bit more on that and some of the other things going on in the local area, let's toss it over now to Captain John Lee from JL Charters. We've mostly been doing bottom fishing trips the past week. Um, sea bass, blackfish. Um, I've done no bass trips. The sea bass fishing is still good. There's a lot of shorts. There's a lot of throwbacks for the keepers. We had a good um, session of black fishing yesterday, a little bit harder today. So we're anchoring up. We're getting blackfish and sea bass and scup all on the same pieces. Um, I've seen very little for albacore or bonita action. We got some big frigate max yesterday off the center wall. Um, anyway, we'll be keeping our eyes open. Take care. Heading west out of Point Judith, we're hearing about some good fishing along the breachways. Just increased action both inside the ponds and outside the ponds. There's a lot of bait around, uh, which is inspiring a lot more feeding activity in the area. For a little bit more on that, let's toss it over now to Declan O'Donnell from Breachway Bait and Tackle. Beautiful day down here in Charlestown, Rhode Island. A uh, bunch of guys got out this morning to go after some fluke and black sea bass. Uh, some reports have been okay from this morning. A uh, couple keeper fluke, usually two or three per boat coming in. Um, some nice fish up to up to five pounds. Um, bass fishing has been still great in the ponds here. It is starting to change out front. Uh, bass are starting to move and they're not holding in their spots like they did all summer here. Uh, we have some good reports of Bonita coming in. Uh, a few anglers finding them. They're hitting epoxies. Some people getting them on Albi snacks and uh, topwater presentations. Uh, fishing out at Block remains good. Still some bass holding out there. Uh, we've had a mix of bait coming around. Uh, some mackerel out front, even some schools of bunker. In the pond here, it's mostly been sand eels, silver sides, uh, rain bait, and peanut bunker schools are starting to show in, in, in large numbers. Um, it's getting to that exciting time of year where, where fish are starting to put the chew on uh, and we're looking forward to things coming. Tuna fishing remains great. Uh, a lot of yellowfin and bluefin both being reported on the jig, on the troll, on pop. Uh, things are good. Hope everyone enjoys the rest of the week. Moving over into Connecticut. 
Um, you know, we've got the uh, greatest bluefish tournament on earth to think about this week, and there's a ton of big bluefish in the area. One of the best spots right now is definitely the race. Um, we've seen a lot of big bluefish coming out of the race. Guys are three-way in bucktails. Guys are uh, throwing some top water, and definitely a lot of fish coming on diamond jigs. Um, seeing some fish well into the teens, definitely contenders. And, um, you know, if you're in the tournament, it's one of those things, I mean, there's so many different ways to win, including the $25,000 grand prize, but there's a slew of other cash prizes. It's definitely worth it if you'd like to fish for bluefish to, uh, to pay the 30 something dollars, get your t-shirt and, uh, and go catch a big blue. Um, and again, the race is one of the places where you've got a really good shot of finding some bigger ones. Also seeing some big bluefish around the mouth of the Connecticut River, which we always seem to see at this time of the year. For a little bit more on that and some of the other things going on in the general area, let's toss it over now to Captain Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. Hey, what's up, guys? For this week's fishing report, we are now in the last uh, seven days of August, and what I like to call this is uh, like the pre-fall run. So over the past few days, we've seen our first legit surface blitzes of uh, bass feeding heavily on the surface. I also heard some reports of some big bluefish blitzes as well. Uh, we actually snagged a uh, juvenile, uh, what they call a tinker mackerel, but it was a, a small Atlantic mackerel. Um, there's still a, a ton of juvenile butterfish. We were catching black sea bass and bluefish and they were spitting up these, these uh, juvenile butterfish. Um, everything looks good. You have the bluefish tournament this weekend. There are a lot of big bluefish all throughout eastern long island sound um they're out on the a lot of the the deeper reefs anywhere from they could be as shallow as 20 feet down out to 140 feet um so i expect to see some big bluefish being weighed in this weekend um that's all i have for you get ready for the fall run uh, so if you're looking to book a trip in September, contact us now, uh, us now, and it should be good light tackle fishing. Now heading up the Connecticut River Valley, we're going to check in with Rowan Lytle. Howdy folks. Uh, so the Connecticut River continues its sort of up and down trend back towards relatively normal flows. Uh, we had some heavy rain earlier in the week that kept it from dropping at the uh, rate it probably should. Um, but it's, as of today, much lower than it was, the lowest it's been in a f uh, at least a month now. Um, so hopefully it will continue to clear, um, and improve. Uh, we just kind of need that bass fishing to be good. I mean, I feel like a broken record. The amount of times I've talked about catfish and carp this summer, which are species I absolutely adore. Uh, but variety is the spice of life and the cleaner and lower the Connecticut river is the more variety you can get out there. Uh, but the conditions are looking much better. Um, so if you're looking for panfish, pike and, and largemouth bass, uh, or smallmouth bass, um, things are getting better in that regard. Uh, get out there, fish fairly finesse stuff. This is a time of year where there's a lot of, um, juvenile herring and shad in the system and the fish can really fatten up on those. It can also kind of make them satiated. Uh, so you need to be, you know, somewhat finesse in your presentations and try and imitate those, uh, those small herring and shad as well. In deeper water, blade baits can work very well. Uh, top water on the edges, if you're looking for, for big smallmouth bass, uh, fish, fish on main river edges. Uh, but good luck out there. Catch some fish. Hope you all are doing well. Now heading out of the Connecticut River region, just a little bit west out to Westbrook, we're going to check in with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. And once again, don't forget about their uh, Old Town Demo Day happening this weekend. Uh, we're getting some good blitzes going on out there. A lot of birds working, um, easy stuff to visualize and chase down. Seems like peanut bunker are primarily fueling those blitzes. There are still adult bunker around too in particular spots. If you can find those, those are certainly a bait worth using. Uh, we love to see this stuff at the end of summer, beginning of fall, that, that prevalence of bait kind of getting flushed out of those tidal creeks. So we're pretty happy about that right now as we cruise into the fall run. There are definitely still some big stripers out there. They seem to be picking a pretty particular time during the tide uh, when they're gonna feed. Um, so if you have a spot that you know is holding fish, it's worth fishing out the whole tide there. Um, and you might find that kind of one hour window of magic. Um, GT eels, live eels, live bunker, like we said earlier, top water is definitely working. That top water bite at the end of the summer is definitely happening right now. It's pretty awesome. Um, especially if you can find one of those blitzes downsize uh, to something, maybe single plugs, uh, single hooks, pardon me, um, make it easier on you while you catch a whole bunch of those smaller stripers feeding on top. Tons of fun out there. 
Uh, sea bass and fluke fishing. Uh, sea bass is picking up a little bit. We're getting some good reports from 70 plus. Um, fluke is pretty spotty still. Um, those of you who have been catching them all summer, you're probably catching them right now. Um, but definitely if you're heading out searching for them, it's worth being prepared to check a few different spots. Uh, otherwise, we are waiting uh, patiently for uh, what is hopefully going to be a good run of hardtails in a few weeks here. Um, so that is what's going on here in central Connecticut. Uh, get out there and good luck. Heading out of the Westbrook area out to New Haven area. Um, another place we've seen a lot of big bluefish. All these deeper reefs, it seems like the whole western part of the sound has, is just seeing a lot of bluefish relating to some deeper reefs. Guys are getting them throwing chunks, guys are getting them throwing diamond jigs, uh, guys are getting them on butterfly jigs, just anything where you can kind of penetrate that deep water, get down deep, um, find some really big blues out there. In fact, I would guess that that might be where the winner comes from. Uh, for a little bit more on that, including some tips for the uh, for the upcoming Greatest Bluefish Tournament on Earth, let's check in now with Max Finch from Fisherman's World. This weekend is the WICC Bluefish Tournament, and it's been really good in our area with blues on our deeper water reefs and coming in shallow at night, feeding on the bunker and the peanut bunker all loaded in the harbor. My good tips would be to diamond jig 11B on the outgoing. There's been a really good bluefish diamond jigging bite there. And then chunking at night. Chunking our deep water reefs are always good this time of year with bluefish. And this year we have a lot of big blues around. Also chumming a lot, bringing like flat to butterfish or flat to frozen bunker and then chumming the water heavy will help bring bluefish to your boat. If you're gonna enter, I would definitely try to fish a whole day. If you can't, you gotta get out when you can. But thanks to everyone and I'll see everybody in the shop and good luck. And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully they're going to inspire you to get out there. And if you live or fish in Connecticut waters, you know, I wish you the best of luck in uh, tracking down that $25,000 bluefish. That would be one heck of a day of fishing right there. Um, and again, you know, this year seems like it could be the year we see one of the biggest, you know, some of the biggest fish at the top of that uh, leaderboard that we've seen in a long time. Uh, just because there's just so many big bluefish across the entire sound. Um, but if you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. Check out what we've got going on. We, we cover a huge range of the coast from Delaware all the way up to Maine. We cover all different fishing disciplines and species that you can catch in that range. Freshwater, saltwater, offshore, and everything in between. If you're not interested still after that, if you don't want to spend that 30 bucks, which is, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing, you get 12 paper issues sent to your house, you get 26 digital issues sent to your email box, and you get access to all the back issues and all the other, both other editions. So if you subscribe to the New England edition, you're going to get access, digital access, to the Long Island and the New Jersey edition. I mean, you're getting three magazines for the price of one at that point, so how could you not do it? But if you're still not interested, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.